What's up, dude? What's up? What are we talking about today? Oh! Posture. Do you got it? Do you have bad posture? I'll bet you do. I'll go about it. 99% of people watching are gonna say yes. God, I need to work on my posture. And the 1%? I'm just kidding. I wish. Even the ones with good posture think they need to work on their yeah. posture. I got good posture. Which, by the way, you don't. But we're gonna talk all about posture today. <laughs> we're both like this. Yeah. So it feels like posture, poor posture and postural issues are kind of like a modern day play. Yeah, people have always had bad posture, I think, from like the invention of the TV and like the computer, but since it's getting more prevalent to be on your phone or in front yeah, of the, the TV. Phones are killer. From the right laptop, now. you're. This is horrible. That forward neck posture is definitely something new. All day. And it starts as a kid where you're in school reading and writing and just be sitting behind the desk. Now with the computers, the tablets, everything is just like forward neck, forward neck, looking down. So I feel like now more than ever, this kind of stuff is like coming out to the light and a lot of people are searching for ways to improve their posture. They're becoming more aware of it. So it's, I think it's a pretty fitting topic to talk about, especially how exercise can help correct certain postural issues. Tell us how. So before we get into any solutions or corrective exercises, stretches and things like that, let's talk about the most important thing. So what, what happens when you just say the word posture? straighten out immediately. Why is that? Because it's awareness, right? Most of the postural issues happen because of positions throughout the day that you're just not aware that you're slouching or you're looking down for extended periods of time. So step number one is just awareness, being aware of your posture throughout the day and your positions and whether it's at work or it's just doing your leisurely time. What is your posture like? Are you sitting up straight? Are you slouching? Is your head forward for extended periods of time? So it doesn't matter what other solutions we can offer or anybody tells you, if you're not aware of your posture throughout the day, you're, you're doing battle. yourself yeah, a disservice. I know I'm guilty of it when I'm home, especially on the computer, on the laptop. At first you might start, oh, after a little bit, you start sinking in, you get comfortable. And it's not until like you, like you said, you're aware of it or somebody comes by and it's like, oh, you're slouching and you're gonna, that's when you finally posture. But yeah, awareness, I think is definitely number one. And it's important to mention too that it doesn't matter how many of the other corrections you make, if you're not aware and working on your position throughout the day, it's all about how many hours of your day you spend in, in like a good posture position versus a slouch position. If you spend a lot of hours in a slouch position, it doesn't matter the correct, you know, you can't like stretch for five minutes a day yeah. and then go oh, on your I computer for, for 12 yeah. or be on your phone for eight hours. Yeah. So again, the body awareness, if you take anything away from this is that that's gonna be the number one thing. Like what positions are you throughout the day? Fake it till you make it actually works for posture because if you're just doing this a lot and like even if it's what not we're doing natural, it right now <laughs> yeah what i do every time on this podcast uh if you do it enough after a while it just becomes second nature yep i agree and you're also like subconsciously training your body that hey i need to be in this position yeah so yeah I, that's a good way to think about it the fake it till you make it yeah people don't recognize that that's actually like well i'm sure you're gonna get into it but that's something muscular that it starts messing up with the anatomy and all that so i'm sure that's we're gonna exactly that what we're gonna get into all right. right now here <clears throat> muscles and stuff. Just touch myself. So when we talk about <laughs> so when we talk about solutions for postural issues, disclaimer is it's going to be on a case by case basis, right? Obviously, like how old you are, how long you've been slouching, how severe your your like slouching your forward neck is. Uh, what kind of job do you do? Do you have a sedentary work? Um, do you have a sedentary like sitting in a desk all day, or are you like a personal trainer like us that are walking around and moving? So that's, that's obviously gonna differ on a case by case. But one thing is for sure, your behavior has to change. Right? You can't just expect, again, to do a few things, you know, five minutes or whatever, a few stretches and, and then not change anything about your day. For example, uh, Brian Johnson, the guy who's trying to live forever, I don't know if you guys Google him, he, uh, he learned that he had bad posture and it was affecting him in a bunch of different ways. So, he goes as far as to like, when he looks at his phone and he checks his phone, he puts his phone up here. He's like, I know it looks ridiculous, but I don't look down at my phone. I put my phone up here in front of me. It's just, it's crazy. I know none of us are gonna, you know, switch to just looking at your phone like this. But for example, when I'm at work and I have my little clipboard that we write on, I've tried to be conscious about 
putting the clipboard up higher and writing because it's another yet another thing where I have to look yeah. down and write. Yeah, we use so clipboards by the way. We're we do school. use clipboards. Yeah, no <laughs> iPads here. So the point being that you're you have to understand that your behavior is gonna have to change. You can't just like. Oh, the rest of my day is going to be normal, but then I'm going to do these few stretches at the end of the day and boom, posture is fixed. It's the same as weight loss. You can't just expect to come in here an hour a week, two hours a week, work out and then eat the same way you've been eating and expect to see crazy like weight loss. It yeah, just doesn't work that way. It's like 98% of your waking hours is like not working not out. Not working out or not. in this case, 98% of your days like this. Some Y raises and face pulls aren't going to fix it. Sorry. True. You have to understand that your body just adapts to your everyday positions and yeah. movements, right? So if you're in a certain position, your body's gonna start and we're about to get into that. What happens when you're like this, right? Certain muscles are tightening up, other muscles are weakening. Yep. You're building imbalances. Posture, am I right? Raymundo. That's Ray. Yeah. What is great, follow bro. him. Follow him on Instagram. It's Ray Ray. Uh, oh, here's the other guy. At Ray the Peace Layer. We don't know what the P stands for. Oh. So let's get into the specifics. What? What would you say are the most common postural issues? I would say kyphosis and... Which is what? Basically like being hunched over for those who are not watching. Even though we don't have an audio podcast, <laughs> but I think we will <laughs> at we some will point. Soon. <laughs> uh, forward neck and... Which uh, go hand in hand. Yeah. And then one that I feel like is very common with women mostly is lordosis of the lower back. Okay. Which yeah, is wait. basically just like you're trying to fake an Instagram pose and trying to pop her butt out exactly. That's a little bit of a different issue, so we won't discuss no, yeah, that. But, that's but just, the ones that are basically a result of modern lifestyle are what you said: rounded shoulders, rounded back, forward neck position. What's going on there, without getting too deep, is it's because of the positions that all this muscular stuff starts to happen. The reason I say that is because a lot of people think, well, oh, I have like really tight because a lot of people will tell you, oh, you, your neck muscles are going to tighten up, your pecs, your chest muscles are going to tighten up, and then your upper back is weakening and lengthening. But it's not because, it's not the tight muscles that are making you have bad posture, it's your bad posture and positions that are making the muscles weak and tight. So yeah, that's important to understand because I was doing a lot of research in preparation for this and a lot of people are saying like that the advice that people give is wrong. The advice is like, oh, just, you know, these muscles are tight, so just stretch these muscles. But they don't tell you at all, hey, you should just be in good posture. Like th work on actually having good posture for the rest of the day because fixing this is not gonna fix your posture. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, no, and if you tell those people with uh, that are trying to stretch and all that to get into that good posture, it's probably gonna hurt. It's not gonna be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Those muscles are gonna feel a little uncomfortable. You might feel a little pinch. It's just something you have to get used to after a little bit. For but, sure. Yeah, it's not and comfortable. It's just practice. But if we do get into what muscles and, and what's happening there, and of course we're gonna talk in, about solutions and actual exercises, but it's think about the muscles in the front of your body your all these muscles on your neck and then your pecs as well start to tighten right as you're in this position they just shorten and and tighten right and then the muscles in the back is the opposite they're kind of lengthening and weakening so a lot of the common posture exercises are working on strengthening the muscles of the upper back upper middle back even like your rectors which is your uh like the muscles that run all the way down the middle of your back so it's strength and we're going to talk about some of those movements but it's strengthening a lot of these muscles so a lot of it is like external rotation and you know going this way with the arms and if you think about it it's just doing the opposite of what the problem is the problem is your slouch you're going forward so it's sure, like well, if you pull so back, it's your yeah. head back you pulling back whether you're doing some band work or, uh, or double chinning exactly one popular ones yeah. so it's basically those muscles that are weak that have been weakened is how to strengthen those uh, and then building balance between the front and the back of your body. Speaking of erectus. Obviously this being a conversation and not uh, an instructional exercise video, we're not gonna be showing what exercises to do, but yeah, that's an easy Google away or you can YouTube it. And you can treat these exercises pretty much like any other muscle group, you know, do it. Three, we're not gonna tell you to do it every day, even though you can do some exercise every day, but you know, treat it like any, just put it as part of your warm up or part of your cool down for your workout routine and just do it three times a week, three, four times a week, two to three sets each. And again, you're just trying to strengthen those muscles that are usually weaker, especially in the upper and middle back. I do some of them while I'm driving. Not obviously, I'm not going to be, I'm not doing wide raises or pulls. I'm doing the, I like to do the chin tuck back, that one while I'm driving. 
to help my neck and with my posture. Yeah, there's also a really good one where you lay face down on the floor, like just completely face down, and then you just try to lift your head up and like get into like a neutral, Not you're not looking up, you're just bringing your chin back, right? You'd be surprised how hard that is because oh, yeah. you're working against gravity. I'm get dizzy right now. So that's another one that you could do, you know, from home. But yeah, like you said, there are some that are easy enough that you could just do, you don't need any equipment. And then yeah. there are some that are actual strength training exercises that you can do with bands or with small dumbbells, like Y raises and face pulls and things like that. Yeah. So um, upper middle back, uh, even your uh, lower back core is also important. So have you noticed how like people that do Pilates and yoga usually, usually have to usually have better posture? Yeah. They're just practicing poses that allow you, they're, they're all about alignment, alignment right? Yeah. Alignment, 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 core, I had a friend named mobility. Alignment. Was he cool? Awesome guy. Right. Smelly feet. Hope you did, uh, shout out Align. I hope shout you're doing well, line, dude. Yeah. Well, one last thing I want to mention about the yoga and Pilates thing is that a lot of people think like, oh, because I'm stretching, stretching, stretching. They, they overemphasize stretching especially people that, that like those type of uh, yeah. like um, movement practices like yoga and Pilates. It's not really the stretching. The stretching is a part of it, but they're doing a lot of strengthening work. Right? So when you're working on those poses, you're also working on your core strength. You're working on balancing, like I said, the front and the back. Because the body likes balance between the front of the mm -hmm. body and the back. So you're strengthening, working on mobility, and working on flexibility. So I don't want... Uh, the reason I mentioned that is I don't want it to think like, I just need to stretch more. Yeah. People think, oh, I just need to stretch yeah, no. my neck or I need to stretch my back or whatever. Not necessarily. You stretching need is overrated. I think it is. You need strength training. So my friend Align, was one day, he's wearing his sandals. My mom blamed him for having smelly oh. feet. What she didn't know was that she had rotting meat <laughs> under the car seat and she blamed poor Align. Hence the snow. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> So what would you suggest for people who say, yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but like I have to work sitting down for eight to 10 hours a day. Yeah, and I have that all the time. I tell those people to put an alarm on Get their phone. Get another job. Yeah, quit their job and come work for us. Um, no, I tell them all the time. I say like, put an alarm every hour. You know how some like, I don't know if you use it on your watch, it tells you time to stand up uh, like about every hour so you're not sitting too long. I tell them to, if they don't have that, to put it themselves. And like, just as a reminder, get up, walk around, even just walking around like, being aware of it, doing some shoulder like rotations, all that stuff is definitely going to help. That's if you can't do the more extreme measure, which is to get a standing desk or to just change the ergonomics of your setup, which you could make so you're at a better posture, so you have better alignment of the shoulders. Yeah, that would definitely be step one is look at your actual setup. Yeah. What is your setup like and make it as ergonomic as you think. I mean, we're obviously sitting on stability balls. That's one thing that, that people do. If you look at us, it, it kind of forces you to to be like, you're not relaxed in this yeah. position. My core is working a little bit. I almost have, feel like if I were to slouch, like you would feel it, right? So again, it's just about awareness. I'm not saying they have to sit on a stability ball, but there are ergonomic chairs. And then I think the most important thing is having that screen eye level. You know, is having the screen down is really yeah. what is contributing to that forward head posture. Yeah. So setup being number one. Number two, I would say exactly what you said, movement. You can't get around that. You can't get around Oh, I'm just gonna sit for seven hours straight and, and then do an some hour. work. Yeah, yeah, do some exercises and I'm gonna be good. No, unfortunately, you, your body likes movement, so you have to get up periodically. There's no way to get to around that. Now, I know that's harder in some jobs than others, yeah. easier said than done, but any little thing is gonna help you. So if you just get up and go for a water break, a bathroom break, whatever, do a few little stretches. Smoke a cigarette. Of course, cigarette, <laughs> pop an Addy. Um, <laughs> Go outside, smoke a cigarette. <laughs> for Will and dude. Ali. The good thing about all this is that you don't really need equipment, especially for the more like the postural stuff and the stuff that you're doing like with your head and neck. You can do it on your desk. You do it just standing uh, right beside your desk. So you don't really need a lot of time or any equipment. Again, I know we're gonna hammer this, but it's, it's about awareness. It's just don't let your entire day go by and then like, oh wow, I, I realized I was slouching all day. Yeah, then there's you couldn't do anything about it yeah i have a question for you mm -hmm. what does this do for you no i have a real one i have a question for you um what do you <laughs> think of those accessories that they sell now for posture that it's like a little book bag that you wear and it's like supposed to straighten you out so what i read about that is that you should you can use it and again i think that's going to give you awareness but don't use it as a crutch don't use it as something that well you know i'm using this now so i don't have to really worry about yeah. this anymore the idea is to get you in the position 
long enough that when you take that thing off, you're still you're in the position. Yeah. But now like, oh, it's just like a weightlifting belt. Like if you only wear the weightlifting belt, you don't let your core muscles do their job. So those things are all tools. If you feel like, kind of like you. So if you feel like you. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I was about to say, you're a tool. I, 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 my I, laugh at that. Um, I know you're going to make a comment. Um, no. So don't depend on it, basically. Use it here and there if you need to. Yeah. I personally wouldn't spend my money on that. But, you know, do you if you really want to. Quack, 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 quack. Last thing I want to say about this is that the younger you start being aware of all these posture things, the better. Because we've all seen how a lifetime of poor posture can lead to just permanent changes. Yep. As you get like old and you start getting to like that aging process, you start to like solidify your positions. And that's how you see those old people that are like permanently hunched over and they, their spine is literally rounded. That is, that can be preventable, but if you catch it in time, if you get it, if, you know, you start noticing this stuff when you're 70, it's going to be a lot harder to change because your body just starts to just kind of harden as you age. And we've seen how hard it is to get those people to do, to get in, into some positions that are essential, I would say. When we're trying to teach them here in RDL or a deadlift or a bent or a row, anything that's straight back, it's impossible to get them into that position. The hips are tight, the, lower, the back is tight. It's almost impossible to get them to unround those shoulders mm -hmm. like you said if it's too late and that's why uh, i feel like strength training is so is good even if you're not focused on your posture because if you look at like let's say weightlifters like olympic weightlifters have great posture but it's because they have a pretty balanced physiques when you're weight training a lot of the movements and you know if you've trained with us or you train with a trainer it's like neutral spine back straight you're constantly cueing yeah. good posture so you're you're working out on your posture without even realizing it. It's kind of like a byproduct of strength training. Now, of course, you could be one of these meatheads that only does bench press and too much chest work without adequate back work actually you get that upper helps. cross. You get that upper cross, like rounded shoulders and very tight chest, which also contributes to the bad posture. But I think more people are, I think it's becoming more fashionable to like train your back too. So more people are like balancing that. Back in the day, it was like chest and bars, bro. Back in the day, oh. Um, Emma, do you have anything to add to this? You're the posture queen. Let's see your posture, Emma. Come strut your Emma, posture. Yeah, come, come show off. Wow. Look at that posture. I got good posture. I got good posture. So regal. Thank you. Do I have anything to add? No. Just don't sit like these guys. I sit great. I got complimented <laughs> on my posture last video, I'll have you know. Did you? He did. He didn't? Nope, I didn't. My, like, natural posture is, like, already looks like I'm full oh, neck. No, but I mean like... Well, you're a Neanderthal. Exactly. So. All right, Emma. Can you want to take us off? Maybe do like a little... A little jig? Yeah, a little yeah jig. that's what I was expecting. Like, a little... And like a... You know? Like, out, out this way? Yeah. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Posture up. It's not a proper podcast without an Emma sighting. Ah.